Hey everyone, it's Raji from Figma, back again with another Figma in 5. Figma in 5 is this deep dive on a topic in only 5 minutes. It's a tip pack session where I brain dump everything that I know into your brains in only a few minutes. I don't want to waste any of your time, so let's get into it. And on the second episode of Figma in 5, we're going to be talking more about vectors. Let's start laying down some points. Let's talk Boolean operations. Boolean operations are the composition of multiple shapes. So all I have to do is select multiple shapes and you'll see this menu here. Now each one of the icons will let you know and give you an indicator of what you get. So you union, you'll actually combine the two together. If you subtract, you'll subtract out the shape from the other shape, the top shape from the bottom shape. Intersect will actually take the intersection of the two, like a Venn diagram. And of course you can use exclude, where it actually excludes the shape from the other, and it'll do the opposite of the intersect. Now these are really, really fascinating because let's go to the union example. We may think that we just have one shape here, but if you come over here in Figma in this disclosure triangle and open it up, it looks a lot like a group. And in fact, if you hold command and actually select a shape underneath, you can actually move that shape around. Now let's go back to that intersect example. If we go to the intersect example and do the same thing, now we select that triangle, that triangle is still editable here. So we can actually move that around almost like a mask. We can also do interesting things like put a border radius on that triangle. So let's do that. And we can see that that border radius is affecting the intersection here. Let's go back to the union example. Let's union these two together. And of course we can now make this triangle bigger or smaller and create this composite shape. If we simply select this, we can apply border radius to that entire shape, which is really, really unique and interesting. Also, you'll see that we can actually move around the shapes and dynamically we get to see the result of the intersect. Really cool stuff. Remember that Boolean operations are not destructive. So at any point we could actually just ungroup these two and we'll get our two shapes that we had before. Let's try something else with Boolean operations. Let's take the union of these two shapes here. Now let's go ahead and flip the fill and the stroke using shift X and bump that stroke size up a bit. Now, when you select this, it looks like the outlines tell you that it's actually broken these shapes down, but that's not true. If we select the underlying object, we can still mess with the stroke size. We can come to the union itself and add a border radius to this as well. The other thing that we can do here is we can still use the smart shape ability. So I can actually now add arc sweep ratio and all sorts of things to this, editing the underlying shape within that Boolean operation. Remember that command, command E. That's going to flatten this object. And now if we click it and hit enter or double click to go in, we can now see the vector points that are within that shape. We've got a document icon that I'm working on here and I'm gonna double click in to edit it. Right here, I can actually create a node off of these two nodes and connect them back to these node points here. Now, this is a unique technology called vector networks. And what that means is I can actually control many nodes connected to one point here instead of having multiple copies of these things. The other thing is we've got a border radius on this object. If we look in this overflow menu, we've got something called corner smoothing. And as I dial in here, you can see the result of the corner smoothing. On one end, we have a more mathematical based border radius smoothing, but as we move this way, it's more of like an iOS style or a Squircle style corner smoothing. If you press P, it will go to the pen tool. And if you hover over a straight line segment, you can see that it hints at the exact halfway point. Let's put a point here, halfway here, and a point here, and we've created a vector network. That means if we move these lines, they'll all stay connected together. The other thing that we can see here is this paint bucket fill tool. If we press B with a vector network, we can actually remove segments out of the triangle. Now, what if I want to remove some of the lines that I've created? Naturally, I might think that if I just deleted this node that it might help, but that's not helping me. I just want to get rid of this one single line. So if I draw a selection line or select this line, I can hit delete and I'll remove that line. Now, what if I just hit delete and remove this point? Well, that actually moved the whole line. The way I can handle this is if I select the point, hit shift and delete, Figma will delete and heal and keep the shape. Creating custom shapes in Figma is super easy. Just use the pen tool or hit P and just start drawing points. Now, if we ever wanna draw a point and add curvature to it, I can hold shift, click and drag. And you can see that I can add a curved line here. 
At any point that I want to add a curved line, but maybe break that line so it's not parallel with these Bezier handles, I can hold Option to break that and move that along. Now, if I ever want to complete this path, I can actually just click back here at the origin point to connect it. Now, let's say I want to connect the two points, but they're disconnected. All I have to do is come here to the Move tool, V, and move that node and snap it to connect the point. Now, if I'd ever like to connect this point automatically to this point, I can actually hold Command J when both are selected and it'll create a join to join those two points together. Now in the situation where say I have some curvature here and when I join these two together, I don't want them to just be joined by a straight line. You can actually select both, hold Command Shift and J and connect and it'll honor the curvature of the line that you placed before it. In this situation, I'm creating a curve and I want this curve to be fully symmetrical. So long as I have pixel grid turned on and snap to pixel grid turned on as well, and I'm zoomed in close enough, I can come into the Bezier handle and actually snap that handle to the grid. Now this curve is perfectly symmetrical. Additionally, I can hold Option and drag out and clone line segments. In this way, I'll clone this line segment. Holding Shift, I can select both Bezier endpoints and actually pixel by pixel nudge this down. Then using the Move tool, I can join the two segments together to create a complete shape. When hovering over a line segment, if I drag it, it'll just drag the shape. But if I hold Command over a line segment, I can actually use the Bend tool to be able to bend the object. That Bend tool can be found right here in the menu as well. Next, what I can do on any node, all of my reflection key combos will work. So Shift H will flip a point horizontally. So I'll flip this one horizontally and this one horizontally as well. Shift V will flip those points vertically as well. Another great tip is to be able to align vector nodes. So if I want to align these two nodes together by holding Option or Alt and hitting A, I can actually align to the left side. If I hold Option and D, it'll align to the right side. Now Option and S will actually align to the bottommost node and lastly, Option W will align to the topmost node. And that's it for this episode of Figma in 5. Hope you learned a ton. Feel free to like and subscribe if you want to keep this content coming. Have a great day.